Okay, so let me just briefly, this is from, uh, this is from a class four lecture, but I still think it holds up today because I think the, the story points are still important. And again, it goes into the difference between rotoscoping your reference and utilizing silhouette and the line of action to make it better. So here I have my video reference on the right and then my first initial pose based directly on rotoscoping my reference. And so we need to talk about how do we actually make this pose better than my reference. So first up silhouette, you can see like my hand is within the body here, we could push that back. Uh, head angle, this is gonna be super important for everyone here because this is where we're looking. How much of the character do we actually see? And talking about the information being conveyed to the audience. If we don't have a lot of props or a lot of background and it's just a character talking, you don't want to stage it to where the information being given to the audience with the face is going to be really hard to look at. So you want to be very clear as to exactly what the face is, how the face is angled towards your camera. Um, and again, silhouette things, upper arms hard to see, and I could probably separate my legs a little bit more here. It's just, you can't quite tell, it looks like one shape at the bottom. So here is my pushed pose on the left here compared to the original on the right. I see I simplified my line of action and clarified a lot of those silhouettes. So it can always be clearer. Never again rotoscope. Every pose you make from your reference could always be clearer, even like 1% better, always. So you can see the, the difference between first and the last version. Cool. All right, so how do we exactly push our poses? Oh, there's my dog. Hi, Aoi. The way I think about it is you wanna split your whatever, um, This I know this is more geared towards like full body poses, but you think about it from the top and bottom of the, the visibility of a character. So for me, I'm in a medium shot here. Divide me up into three parts. I have my top, I have my medium and my bottom. And what you want to do is do your initial pose of whatever it is, see where the top, the medium, and the bottom land, and then make a decision of pushing and pulling one of these parts. Either the top gets pulled, the middle gets pulled, or the bottom gets pulled. And the way you determine wh which end gets pulled, again, goes to whatever the action is going to be after this pose. So if I know that my character is going to be going to look this way, I may want to push my head pose just a little bit more, knowing that this is the action that the character is going to be doing. So let's take a look at a couple examples. So here's from the Drawn to Life series books by Walt Stanchfield. You can see the original students drawing on the left here, and here's Walt's pushed version of that on the right. Still doing the same action, but the silhouette is much clearer on the right. You can see the intention uh, on the right much clearer. Here's a similar one, students on the left, Walt is, uh, Walt's version is on the right. And again, you can see how we took just one of those aspects of the top one and nudged it over just a little further, clarifying that silhouette. Same thing here, just pushing one of those edges, top, middle, or bottom. And that doesn't just count for full body poses. If everyone's familiar with uh, Mr. Incredible here, you can see they have, you can apply those same top, middle, and bottom logistics to each one of these poses. And you can see how you have three very distinct emotions and how you have three very distinct lines of action on these poses. Speaking of Mr. Incredible, let's watch another animated clip. Um, this is from um, Incredibles 2 count how many poses are actually in this sh these series of shots for Mr. Incredible. Hey, bud. Hey. Where's Jack-Jack? He's taking it for a little bit. Edna is babysitting. Yeah. And you're okay with this? Yeah, I don't know why, but yeah. I wanted to say something to you. Sorry about Tony. I didn't think about Dicker erasing his memory or about you having to pay the price for a choice you never made. It's not fair, I know. And then I made it worse at the restaurant by trying to, anyways, anyone, I'm sorry. 
I'm used to knowing what the right thing to do is, but now I'm not sure anymore. I just want to be a good dad. You're not good. You're super. You can see, we'll go through this real quick, but overall you can tell very little number of poses. Really, if anything, they're choosing very specific, strong poses and staying within them and acting within them. And you can tell that when a character actually does move. So here we have just one pose. He comes down, boom, he hits his pose. But you could see when he does actually accent something, like a head nod. Hey, Violet. You could see that has a lot of weight to it. And it's really important now to start thinking about when you're making your first blocking poses is what's going to be moving and what's not going to be moving. Because when, when you're doing a pose where a majority of the time you're not really moving, when you do move, it has significance. We view that as a contrast and go, oh, that, that, that means something, he moved. Every little head nod, I think, is very well articulated. This is from Michael Makarovich. Um, very, very cool stuff. Uh, his reel is fantastic. The, there's just, just the simplicity of moving a head up, moving a head down, keeping all this relatively still. And then when he goes to bend over and sit, you're like, ooh, that's, he's entering a new phase in terms of his explanation to Violet. The original goal of the shot would be to just relax, communicate with Violet, and then go to bed. But during the course of this dialogue, he realizes that with her, with he was responding to Violet being upset. So he needed to change course. He says he now needs to, very much like Flynn, open up about a lot of his problems going on in order to reconnect with her. And that kind of spills out. When that tipping point happens, boom, that's when he comes down and changes poses into a more self-reflective, non-facing version. Again, he doesn't want to face the truth. So he steps away from Violet at this point. So very smartly done. Um, I thought this is what, probably one of, the, one of the better examples of subtle acting that I really liked. <laughs> 